Molly, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video on all the dental treatments that there are and what instruments and materials you'll need for them. I'm not going to go into excessive detail, otherwise this video would be ridiculously long, but just the basics. And I'm doing this, one, because somebody asked me to make a video about this, I know it was a while ago, I'm really sorry it's taken me this long, but two, because when you're training it can be really difficult to remember things, so this might be a bit helpful to jog your memory. Anyway, if you want to hear about this and see the different types of treatments and materials and instruments that we use, then just keep watching. So I'll start off with a checkup. So a checkup is obviously when you go to the dentist and they just check your mouth. They check all your teeth, they check your gums, they check all the soft tissues sort of around your head and your neck, just feel that everything seems okay. That's pretty much what everybody goes to the dentist for. For this, you just need three instruments. You just need a mirror, a probe, and a probe. The mirror is obviously a mirror, how they look around the mouth. A probe is just to obviously have a little poke around. Anything that they see that's suspicious, they can just scrape it see whether it's soft or hard and then the perio probe is something that checks the pockets of your gums make sure that you have healthy gums and that the pockets don't go too deep if you have pockets you also need to use a three-in-one tip you need a three-in-one tip for absolutely everything that you do this is uh, the thing that squirts out air and water but it can also do both so it can do three things out of one little gum. So that's all you need for a checkup, and a checkup is obviously your basic exam at the dentist. Now I will go on to fillings. So there are two main materials of a filling, and then there's another one which I will get into in a second. So you've got your composite and your amalgam, your white filling and your metal filling. Every practice will do a filling tray slightly differently. I will just run through the basics of what probably is on a filling tray. It might not be exact, but this is just what we do in my practice. So you'll always have a mirror and probe on every filling tray. Obviously your three in one tip will be there. And then we would use an amalgam packer, a ball burnisher, sometimes a carver, an excavator and a flat plastic. And there will also be some tweezers on the tray and maybe some a wide and narrow matrix band or a clear matrix band strip. Obviously your mirror and your probe I've explained. An amalgam packer, if you're doing a metal filling, is to pack in the amalgam once it's in the tooth. So this squirts out of a little gun. If I can find photos, I will put them in for you. So the amalgam comes out of a little gun and then you use the amalgam packer to squidge it into the tooth and make sure every part of the cavity is filled up. The ball burner shell will be used to smooth that, smooth the surface. Not every dentist will use this. It's just a tool if they want to use it. The carver isn't always used. Sometimes a flat plastic is used in its place, but it's just to carve around the filling and get excess bits of the filling off. An excavator is used as a handheld instrument to scrape any remaining decay out of the tooth once you've drilled it. If it's just got a tiny bit left and you don't want to go too deep with the drill, then it's used to scrape out any remaining bits of decay. It can also have other uses, but this is mainly just for fillings. And finally, a flat plastic is similar to a carver but it can also smooth over, it gets rid of excess, it can put certain materials into the tooth. It has a lot of different uses, especially for broken teeth. But again, I'll get into that in a second. And then your tweezers, obviously basic tweezers, used to put maybe cotton wool rolls inside the mouth, take them out, any small little things, wooden wedges. That's what the tweezers are there for, to do any fiddly bits that you can't do with sausage fingers. Matrix bands are kind of metal strips that go around the tooth. And this is because, say these are your two teeth, when you fill it, especially if, you're, if you've got decay in between the teeth, so on this surface here, and you've drilled that way, it's gonna create a little gap. In order to fill it so that the teeth are still touching, but not so that the filling goes between the two teeth and you can't floss it, a matrix band or matrix strip will go around the tooth and it will stop any filling material going onto the adjacent tooth. Now the difference between a matrix band and a matrix strip, normally matrix strips are used for the front of the teeth, so they're little see-through plastic ones, just go in between the front teeth or whichever tooth you're doing, and a matrix band is an actual band that goes around the entire tooth. They're more used for premolars, molars, and then your matrix strip 
are used for your incisors, lateral incisors. So that is on a basic filling tray. And like I said, you've got two main fillings, your amalgam, so your metal filling, and your composite, so your white filling. White fillings, you will need three separate things for. So you need acid etch, which primes the tooth. You will then need a bonding agent or just bond, which is almost like a super glue for the composite to stick on. And then you'll need the composite itself, so the white filling. When you do a composite filling, you obviously first drill the tooth, get all the decay out. Or if it's just a cosmetic filling, you either won't need to drill at all or just drill away a little bit just for it to be a smoother surface. Your dentist will then put acid etch on. This sets for normally around between 10 and 30 seconds and then gets washed off. After this, the tooth needs to be completely dry and you will put the bonding agent on. This is then set with a UV light for about 10 seconds. Once this is set, you put the composite filling straight on top of this and it again sets with the UV light about 30 seconds. Then the filling is smoothed over. You can do it in layers, so you do your etch bond composite and composite sticks to composite, so you don't need to then do etch bond composite again. Once you've got your composite layer on, if you need to do a second layer, then composite will stick to composite. As I'm talking about all of this, I realise it is a lot of information to take in. It's a lot of information to spill out, having to actually remember it and go through everything in my head. And it might be too much for one video, so I might have to do it in two parts, but we'll see how long it takes me. A reason you may not be able to have a composite filling, either if you're not willing to pay the private fee. So composite fillings are private unless it is on a front tooth. Obviously, they're not going to stick a metal filling right on that front tooth. They will do it white. But if it's a back tooth that you can't see, and you are NHS, the NHS guidelines are to do it as a metal filling. Age does kind of come into it, but I'm not gonna go too much into detail about that. So if you don't want to pay the private fee for white filling, then you'll need to have a metal filling. So that may be one reason you don't have a white filling because it's not done under the NHS for a back tooth. Another reason is that a filling is too deep and you cannot get the tooth dry enough. Like I said, after the etch goes on and is washed off, the tooth has to stay dry for composite to stick. It does not like moisture, so it won't stick if the tooth is too wet to do it, or if it's too deep of a filling. This may be another reason why you need a metal filling. So now I'm gonna move on to metal fillings or amalgams. So again, for this, you'll need your filling tray, and then all you need is your amalgam and your amalgam gun. This mixes in something called an amalgamator. It comes as powder, that when you shake it up, it forms into a little ball of, it kind of looks like liquid metal, I suppose, but in a solid form. I don't really know how to explain that very well. But once that's all mixed up, it gets popped into a little pot and then you use the amalgam gun to scrape it up, pass it to the dentist, he'll squeeze out the amalgam gun and into the tooth, and then use the amalgam packer as I explained before. That is it for your amalgam fillings. You don't need to put anything on it and wash it off. You don't need to use any kind of super glue you just use the amalgam. Again, you wanna keep the tooth as dry as possible, but if a little bit of moisture gets into it, it doesn't particularly matter, it will still stick. Amalgam is also better for bigger and deeper fillings, so this may be a reason why you can't have a white filling and you need to have a metal filling, because the filling itself is so big. Composite is pretty much just as strong as amalgam now. Sometimes amalgam is just that bit stronger, so they will do an amalgam filling for a bigger cavity. So now moving on from amalgam, the last type of filling you could have would be a glass ionomer filling, also known as GIC, Chemfill, GI. It is a white filling material. Normally it's used more on children when they need a filling, but it can be used in some adults as well. And this is either in a little capsule that again you mix in the amalgamator, it goes in a gun and the dentist will squirt it in. This is then set with a UV light, or it can be used as powder and water that you mix together and popped into the tooth. This doesn't need a UV light to set. You probably won't need an entire filling tray for this, just mirror, probe, tweezers, 
and a flat plastic. That's pretty much all I give the dentist when we do a GI filling. For things like temporaries, you also get a few other options. So polyef, again, a powder and water substance that you mix together, scoop it onto a spatula. The dentist will then use a flat plastic to put it into the patient's mouth. That's normally used as a temporary. You can also use something called calzonol, which is, again, powder and water that you mix together. I'm sure you probably can get capsule forms of it, but in my practice, we have the powder and water that you mix together. For sticking things like crowns in, you can either use GI or you can use Ketac. Pretty much do exactly the same thing. Again, powder and a liquid. There are lots of different forms of powder liquid that you can use as temporaries to stick temporaries in, to stick permanent crowns in. So that is pretty much the basics of it. I'm not going to go into too much. I just wanted to do the main treatments. So now moving on from fillings, I'll go into root canal treatment. Now this is a little bit more complicated. I would normally give the dentist a filling trait for root canal treatment because it's still a root canal filling but it goes into the tooth. Now everybody seems to get freaked out about root canal fillings but it's just the same as a normal filling but inside the tooth. So what they do, they drill as they normally would and once they get so deep that they can see the roots of the tooth, they clean it out. The dentist will normally use a filling tray and you'll have a root canal box to sit in. This will be different size files because you have to start with a thin one and then get bigger and bigger to get all the gunk out of the root. You will need a Bunsen burner. This is going to be a really difficult one to talk about actually because there are so many different things that you use so I might not be able to explain all of it but just as a basic the dentist will draw the tooth out clean out all of the roots and you'll just pass him the bits that he needs he will then use a substance to put down between the roots it's all under different kind of brand names the one that we would use is called tubercil you have something called paper points again i'm going to put pictures in if i can find them use these paper points to dry all the roots once they are cleaned out and then you use something called a gutta persia or a gp point, roll it in this tuber seal and put it down the root of the tooth to fill up the root. Once this is done, the reason why you use a Bunsen burner is that you get an instrument basically boiling hot and then you burn off the bit of GP point that's sticking out the tooth. You're not burning the tooth, this is the tooth, this is the gutta percha sticking out of it. You need to get rid of this and the only way to do that is to burn it off. So you're not burning any of the tooth, you're just burning this bit of the gutta percha, so then you've got a flat surface to put a filling on top of. A lot of the time, once you've had a root canal, you will need a crown, and I'm going to talk about this now. So a crown is used when you have an extremely weak tooth, and a filling won't hold because you haven't got enough tooth there to hold the filling. So for a crown prep, I probably wouldn't give the dentist a filling tray. I would just give him basic mirror, probe, flat plastic, probably tweezers. I wouldn't give him a full filling tray. And a lot of the time with the dentist will ask for what he needs anyway. So for a crown prep, say this is the tooth, they need to drill around the tooth to get it into a shape that's gonna fit a crown over it. So if you just try to put a crown on top of the tooth, obviously it's gonna be huge in your mouth. So they need to drill the tooth down to a size that when the crown goes over it, it's gonna be a good fit in your mouth. Every dentist does it slightly differently, but by the way of the book, you need to take an impression of the mouth before you do any kind of drilling. This will be to make the temporary. You take an impression of the mouth as it is, and then that impression will get put on the side to use a bit later. You then drill around the entire tooth to make it into a stump, basically. And then you need to take another impression of this with a stronger impression material. This is kind of a putty. So on the nurse's side, I'll have the alginate out, I will have the putty material out, and then there's different materials that the dentist needs to use, and I'll kind of talk about that but until you actually do it it's very complicated to just be like then you use this and you use that then you do this and you do that because until you do it it doesn't quite make sense I'm just going to talk through the basics of what you do you've drilled around this tooth and then you need to use a stronger putty impression material to take an impression of now what this tooth looks like so that the lab can make a crown that fits on top of it with this stronger impression material you then need to get a more liquidy kind of material that squirts over this to shape it perfectly. So the dentist will squirt that on, then take an impression of the upper or lower arch, whichever one you've done the crown prep on, for the lab to now see what this 
tooth looks like. Once that impression is done, you need to make a temporary to go over the top of this. Some patients say don't worry about a temporary, which is absolutely fine. Some dentists will say you don't need a temporary, again, fine. But if you're gonna make a temporary, then you can either use the original impression that you took of what the mouth looked like before you did any drilling. You use something called integrity. I'm sure there's different materials you can use as well, but in my practice, we would use integrity. This gets squirted into the original impression and then put on top of the drilled out tooth. So when you remove this impression, you've got your pretty much exact tooth. You could also use temporary crowns for a temporary crown, so these come in metal forms or plastic forms. Every tooth has a general shape, so the upper left seven will have a general shape, the lower right five will have a general shape. The dentist will take out whatever tooth it is, cut it down to size, and then put it over with probably temp bond, maybe GI. You can, like I said before, also use something like poly F as a temporary, just to go over, it won't be a great tooth shape, it will just be something to go over so that it doesn't feel like a stump in your mouth. And that is basically all a crown prep is. So prepping the tooth into a stump, taking impressions, sending them off to the lab for the lab to make a crown. Once the crown comes back, normally about two weeks later, it's then made sure that it fits on the tooth, it feels okay, and then it's cemented in with normally glass ionomer, which I've covered earlier. The only thing I'm not really going to talk about is implants because I don't do them in my practice so I don't know that much about them. I'm not really going to go into orthodontics either because although I do do orthodontic nursing this would be a whole different video. If you want me to cover that then I will do just leave me a comment down below. But that pretty much brings me to the end of this video. I don't think I've missed anything out. If I have let me know I'll do another video on it but that just pretty much covers the basics of what each treatment is, what you might need to use and and why you might need to use it. Anyway, I hope it was a little bit helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button down below, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! -ya.